So what are some of the things that can kill your electric car? I've done videos that deal with conventional gasoline and diesel powered cars and the things that drivers typically do that will damage the engine. And a lot of people might wrongly reason that electric vehicles are beyond those problems, that those problems don't apply to electric vehicles. So we're just going to look at the most common things that people are doing all the time that will eventually damage or degrade the life or the performance of their electric vehicle. Some of these actually put people off from buying electric vehicles, but there's also been some changes in developments in recent times. So I'm going to try and cover these. I'm not going to be too nerdy when it comes to discussing these, but the intention of this video is just to give you a good overview. So if you've got an electric vehicle, you can avoid these common pitfalls. And if you're thinking of getting one, you may have been put off by some of the myths that surround some of these items that I'm going to mention. So the power plant within an electric vehicle is basically batteries. So you've got something there that you don't generally have to rely on too much in conventional cars, although there are still batteries in conventional cars and these things do affect batteries to some extent. So first off, the operating temperature of a battery, a battery capacity will dramatically tail off in colder weather. I've heard of people that live in some cold climates being unable to get anywhere near the full range out of their electric vehicle or their electric vehicle is just not usable under extremely low temperatures because the batteries have just got too cold. So just keeping your car covered overnight in a garage or in a, a warmer building than it would be outside can prevent a lot of those problems and the degradation that you get to a battery in cold weather. But you may just decide not to use your electric car in the cold weather just because the battery capacity tails off so much. Also, adversely, if the temperature is too hot, that can affect the performance of the batteries. So keep an eye on the operating temperatures. If you're getting warnings coming up on the dashboard or it's backing off on the performance, maybe you just need to slow up a little bit, stop putting as much heat into the battery system by demanding excessive discharges with your driving. So just being aware of that, maybe in very hot regions, in the summertime, you'll be outside of those safe operating parameters, and that may be impacting a little bit on the performance of your electric car. But again, a lot of people talk about rapid charging. Now, rapid charging on batteries does cause degradation. So the type of battery you have certainly will play a role in its ability to take on fast charges. But a key takeaway here is to follow the instructions that come with your electric vehicle for the battery pack that you've got installed. Now, some models have changed over the years. So frequent fast charging to 100 percent will often degrade those older style of batteries. There are new batteries being fitted to electric vehicles that need to be kept roughly to the 100 percent charge or fully charged with each cycle. So that's really why it's just important to follow the instructions. If you have a battery that doesn't like to be charged to 100 percent, and you always charge it to 100 percent, very quickly you're going to find the range dropping off and the battery capacity will be substantially reduced. So in those instances, most people will charge to about 60, 70, 80%, depending on the typical range that you need in a day. And just make sure you've got your day's range in it. It's not like a conventional car where you fuel it up, you use it for a week or two, and then you fuel it up fully again. Electric cars are really best usually maintaining that charge above 50%, but below 80%. And the other thing you've got to watch out for is dropping the charge to dangerously low levels. Levels. So you hear about people whose batteries have actually died because the charge has dropped off. Maybe they've gone away for a couple of weeks. There's been some drain on the car battery or it wasn't fully charged when they actually left it parked up. And just because the voltage is drained out, it then becomes really hard to get that voltage to go back into the battery. So with a lot of electric cars, they've got a, a relatively low voltage battery system and a high voltage battery system. And Sometimes you can boost the low voltage battery system and just start to get some charge going into it. But if you're not able to do that, then sadly, it's often a case of having to replace the battery pack entirely. I'm sure there's going to be a ready aftermarket of units that you can buy for your car. But for now, most people have to go back to the manufacturer to get a new battery pack. And the prices of those are eye-wateringly expensive. So please just keep an eye on the charge levels of the battery. If it says not to charge it to 100% all of the time or not to fast charge it all the time, don't do that. It will reduce the life expectancy of the battery. And keep an eye on the levels. Don't let the battery capacity drop 
too low. So often manufacturers are releasing software updates for electric vehicles. Now, the electric vehicle is controlled very much by a computer. You've got lots of components within the engine that control the charging, the discharging, the delivery of power, the way the car responds to you. And as manufacturers build up a picture of the sort of things that are happening, they may address faults, they may adjust the software setup just to avoid or mitigate the problems that crop up. So just missing those software updates can leave you with an out of date system that's potentially got a fault or a flaw that the manufacturers flagged up and fixed and you're just going to fall foul of whatever that problem was, whatever effect it has on the long term reliability of your car. So not reading the manual, be aware of the manual and what it says and driving instructions and what you should and shouldn't do. As human beings, we seem often incapable of reading an instruction manual. Let me know what your thoughts are on the instruction manuals. But please just spend an evening going through the instruction manual of your electric car. Electric cars are very different from the older style of cars that we grew up on and understand. So you're really needing to refresh your knowledge. You're needing to get new knowledge in in order to cope with this completely new technology that you're now driving. And a lot of the other things that apply to conventional cars with regard to braking on a hill still apply to electric vehicles. So electric vehicles have a regenerative braking system, but they still utilize a pad and disc, a friction surface. And if that gets too hot, it will stop working effectively. So don't ride the brakes down the hill because that will lead to brake failure and a potential crash when you go to rely on the brakes and they're just not able to give you the stopping power that you need. Keep an eye also on the tire pressures. So electric cars are generally much heavier than conventional cars. The battery packs themselves weigh an awful lot. So the tyres are doing a lot more work. So observe the correct pressures, which are generally much higher than maybe you would have used on your older family gasoline or diesel powered car. The tyre pressures may be much higher than what you're perhaps used to on the old style of family car. And just fastidiously maintain those tyre pressures make sure you get the recommended tires electric vehicle tires are a different style of construction to the conventional cars the torque delivery from the engine is completely different you'll want something to deaden the road noise because you've not got the engine note drowning out the road noise so most Electric car tyres have some sort of sound deadening material inside them to mitigate that problem that you would have. And the tread patterns are very specifically designed to aid the smooth delivery of the electrical power, the torque that you're getting from the electric motors. So I hope this has been useful to you. Let me know what your thoughts are on electric vehicles. Have you got one? Are you considering buying one? Have you been guilty of any of these things that have been flagged up in this video? And have I missed any off? I've not got an electric vehicle yet. So I don't know how to damage them and kill them fully. I just go by things that our members have told us and our viewers and our readers. So please give me your feedback. Let me know what your thoughts are on this topic. Are there any other ways of killing an electric car that people maybe need to be made aware of? And thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so because we'd love you to stay tuned. Thanks for watching.